my channel. Hope you've all had a wonderful day. Today's video is my July TBR and check your shelf readathon. Um, so it's a readathon that me and the lovely Nikki came up with. I will leave a link to her channel in the description down below. Um, and if you want to take part, that'd be super awesome. Um, so basically, this readathon is um, only has one rule, and it's one prompt, one book, one shelf. Um, so for each of the five prompts, you can only pick one book from each shelf on your bookshelf. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it. It's gonna be quite a sort of small readathon as it's only five books, um, but I am not gonna be putting too much pressure on myself this month. I found um, June's TBR and um, readathon really tricky to do purely because I got myself into a bit of a reading slump, but you will hear all about, all about that in my um, June wrap up. Um, but yeah, these are the books I have chosen. So prompt one is a book featuring a good friendship. Um, so the book I went for, I'm sorry about the lighting guys, um, is Lost Christmas by David Logan. This book is actually on my 10 books to self-destruct in a year if I haven't read them. Um, but I picked it because it says 11 year old goose is lost. It's Christmas, his parents are dead, and now his dog Mutt has gone missing. Those around him aren't doing much better. His uncle Frank's wife has walked out on him, and his nan is losing her mind. But then Anthony appears, a man who seems to know everyone's secrets. Sorry. Stay <laughs> you um, But nothing at all about himself. Who is he, how does he know so much, and can he help Goose? So begins a dramatic adventure through love, loss, and the quest for home. So I thought it sounded really good. Um... It's just been on my shelf a really, really long time, and I thought that Anthony and Goose will probably have a really nice friendship. So yeah, I'm excited to give this one a read. And uh, next up is a highly anticipated book. So for that, I chose Daisy Jones and the Six. Um, so this I picked up, I want to say, end of last year, beginning of this year. Um, and I picked it up purely because um, Booktube was going mad about it. Sorry. <sighs> right, we're good. Yeah, purely because Booktube was going mad about it. Everyone was talking about it, everyone was raving about how good it was. And I picked it up while I was in Sainsbury's and it has been on my shelf ever since. So, um, yes, it is. it has been highly anticipated. I am really excited to read it. And it says, for a while, Daisy Jones and the Six were everywhere. Their albums were on every turntable. They sold out arenas from coast to coast. Their sound defined an era. And then on 12th of July, 1979, they split. Nobody ever knew why until now. They were lovers and friends and brothers and rivals. They couldn't believe their luck until it ran out. This is their story of the early days and the wild nights. But everyone remembers the truth differently. The only thing they all know for sure is that from the moment Daisy Jones walked barefoot onto the stage at the Whiskey, the band were irrevo irrevocably changed. Making music is never just about the music, and sometimes it can be hard to tell where the sound stops and the feeling begins. So yeah, I'm excited for this one. I can't wait to get to it. From what I gather, it's all told from like diary entries, or it's like a script. Um, so yeah, I am really excited to finally be getting to this one. Uh, next up is a book that has diverse characters. So as you guys know, I have been reading the Magisterium series with the lovely Nikki Pearson, and um, I'm gonna be reading the final book, which is The Golden Tower. Um, this is by Holly, ba Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. Um, and the reason this book has diverse characters is because Master Rufus um, is gay. Um, and I'm assuming from information from the last book we might get to find out a little bit more about um, his sexuality and um, the man he's with, um, which I would be quite excited for because I don't really have many books like this on my shelf um, that have diverse characters in. Um, that is something I'm looking to change, um, but for the minute this is what I have. So yeah, I'm really excited to be finishing the series as well. I'm hoping Nikki will buddy read it with me at the same time. Um, but I know she obviously has her own 
um, prompts and her own readathon to be doing, so we shall have to see. But yes, I am really excited for The Golden Tower, so that's that one. Next up is read a book with a pretty cover. Um, so I have picked a book that has a pretty cover and one that I really need to get to. Um, and this is Cecilia Ahern's If You Could See Me Now. Um, so I picked it because it has this gorgeous sort of gold shimmery cover and then it is covered in these gorgeous dandelion clocks. And I am a sucker for a dandelion clock. I think they're awesome. Um, so yeah, this is the book I picked up. And it says, In the town of hearts, one woman has hers under lock and key. Everything in Elizabeth Egan's life has its place. From the espresso cups in her gleaming kitchen to the swatches and the paint pots of her interior design business. Order and precision keep her life under control and keep Elizabeth's heart from the pain and hurt she suffered in the past. The only cloud on the horizon is her sister. A red-haired whirlwind, she is always leaving behind pieces which Elizabeth struggles to pick up, including her six-year-old son, Luke. Being a reluctant mother whilst trying to keep her business on track is a full-time job, one which leaves little room for error or fun. Until one day, a stranger unexpectedly comes into their lives. Ivan is carefree, spontaneous, and always looking for adventure. Everything that Elizabeth is not. In no time at all, he has crept under her skin and started to change her life in ways she could never have imagined. But Elizabeth knows little about Ivan, who he is, and whether he is everything he seems, and whether there is a future for their blossoming relationship. So I have possibly all of Cecilia Ahern's books on my shelf. I am slowly making my way through them, um, but this one is the next one to be read. Um, and yeah, it is a gorgeous cover. So yeah, I'm excited about that one. And then finally, um, it is to read a book um, set at sea or a large expanse of water. Um, now I really struggled with this one um, and I really wasn't sure if I had something that was going to fill that prompt or not, um, but I do. And it's Poor Unfortunate Soul by Serena Valentino. Um, and obviously it's a Little Mermaid retelling, um, or rather the um, Disney villain um, side of it. And obviously Little Mermaid, there's water. So it says, how did the sea witch Ursula become so twisted and filled with anger and hatred? Determined to be with her new love, Ariel makes a dangerous deal with Ursula. Will the cost of losing her enchanting voice and nearly her soul prove too high for Ariel, or will the power of good prevail? Losing then finding one's voice is at the heart of the classic story of the Little Mermaid. Um, so yeah, I am excited to be getting to these. I am trying my best to kind of read one each month. So I am excited to have this one in this month's. Um, yeah, I'm not putting too much pressure on myself this month, so there are only five books. I might read more than that. Um, I tend to listen to audiobooks quite a lot, so I might have a lot of audiobooks um, come through at the end with my wrap-up, but I'm really excited to get to these. I have just realised, though, I haven't actually told you which shelf these books came from. Um, so let's bring them back. So Lost Christmas actually came from the bottom shelf, which is my Christmas shelf. Um, yes, I do have enough Christmas books to fill a shelf. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to be reading this one. Daisy Jones and the Sixth Six came from my hardback shelf, which is on my new shelves over there. They're only half the size of this one, um, but yeah, it's on my hardback shelf over there, so I'm excited to read this one. Um, the Golden Tower is actually on this shelf here, which is my um, second fantasy shelf. Um, so yeah, that's that one. Then Cecilia Ahern is on my contemporary shelf, which is this one. My contemporary shelf is a bit higgledy-piggledy at the minute. It has a combination of lots of other books on it, but it is from my contemporary shelf. And then finally, um, Poor Unfortunate Soul is from this shelf up here which is my first fantasy shelf. Um, so I figure I can get around it on those as they are on different shelves. They're just separate genres. Um, so yeah, well, not separate genres, but you know what I mean. That's how I'm getting around it. But yeah, that's everything from me. I really hope you guys want to join in in this. If you do, then let us know. Leave a link to your um, Instagram or um, your YouTube channel because we'd love to check it out. Definitely head over and watch Nikki's channel um, and see her TBR. And yeah, have fun and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!